Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking all about nematodes and how I use them to get rid of one of the most annoying plant pests, not for the plants but for us, fungus gnats. The bane of my existence at the minute, they're flying around my flat everywhere, getting all up in my face while I work, they get near me when I'm drinking, they're attracted to the carbon dioxide, really annoying, and I just want rid of them, and the best way I have found to do that is through nematodes, so I wanted to share all about them with you today. Before I get into it though, I just want to say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet, so if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch more of my videos, and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, welcome back. I really hope you enjoyed this video too. Let's get into it. So before we get into nematodes specifically, I want to talk about fungus gnats, how to identify them just very, very, very quickly. Fungus gnats are these tiny, tiny little fly looking things, kind of look like fruit flies, but instead of flying around fruit or around your drain in your kitchen, they fly in and around your house plants, mostly living in the soil because they like to consume the fungus that grows in your soil when it is moist. And of course this gets worse with overwatering, so if you are a chronic overwaterer or you tend to keep your plants quite moist, you might notice fungus gnats a bit more frequently than someone who leaves them a little bit more on the drier side. But even still, as a chronic underwater myself, I still have fungus gnats. It's kind of part and parcel with having this many plants and I just accept that I will almost always have some, but I don't have to have so many that they are annoying me and messing with me. And that's the thing, they don't really bother the houseplants, only if your infestation gets really, really, really bad can they start affecting your plant's root health. But they're mostly just annoying for us, they get in our face, they fly around, they're not that attractive, like no one wants bugs flying around their house. So it's just better to try and get rid of them and getting rid of them is really, really easy with nematodes. You can even see how many I have at the minute is while I was writing my notes up, I caught at least two in the like half an hour where I was writing up my notes for this video. I caught two and put them in my notebook to show all of you. <laughs> they're easy to catch with your hands, but they're still annoying. I don't want them and if I can do anything to get rid of them, I will. So the first question is what are nematodes? So when you're buying nematodes, you'll be buying them in a little packet like this. Sometimes they come in a little tray with a lid and you're buying them by the millions. There are millions of tiny little nematodes in here because nematodes are microscopic little worm-like things. They're not worms. They don't have segments or whatever, but they're microscopic. You're not going to be able to see them with your naked eye. And there's different nematodes that do different things and prey on different types of plants, animals, etc. The kind that you'd be buying for fungus gnats are this kind. I'm not going to try and pronounce it because it's a long Latin word. Typically known as like SF variety. In this packet, you're getting a mix of two types. It says it all on the Ladybird Plant Care website where I get these from. The nematodes prey on specific garden pests, in my case fungus gnats aka scarab fly I think they're pronounced, though this packet itself does work against thrips, scale, I think caterpillars and a couple other things, but I am mostly using it for fungus gnats for my needs. And when you're buying something like this, you can use it in your garden or in your home for houseplants. I don't have a garden. I don't need to get rid of the fungus gnats in my non-existent garden. I need to get rid of the fungus gnats in my houseplants. So this is the perfect thing for me. And like I said, I got this from Ladybird Plant Care, who's actually very kindly sponsored this video because they wanted me to share the joy of nematodes with all of you. So I wanna say a couple quick words about them. Ladybird Plant Care is all about helping people save their plants from pests in a natural, biological way. Biological pest control is one of my favorite types of pest control. It's no chemicals. It is the most natural form of trying to get rid of or minimize the amount of pests we have in our home. And Ladybird 
third plant care is focused solely on that. In a natural ecosystem, everything, every creature is food for some other creature. And so biological pest control is about finding the natural predators for the specific pests you're dealing with. And Ladybird has done that hard work for us, collecting them all into one place where you can buy all of the great predatory mites, nematodes, in order to decrease the populations of pests in our home by increasing the population of predators. Because when we're filling our homes with plants, we're giving them light and warmth all year round. Not only are we creating a good habitat for them, we are also creating the perfect habitat for pests. And so the natural way to deal with that is to boost the population of their predators, which wouldn't naturally occur in these plants. So we've got to bring them in to boost that population. And Ladybird Plant Care is the perfect place to get those. So check out ladybirdplantcare.co.uk to see what predators will be good for the pests in your life and to maybe try out some of these nematodes for yourself. See what the hype is about because they do really freaking work. Or you can visit them on Instagram at ladybirdplantcare. Thank you so much again, Ladybird Plant Care, <laughs> for sponsoring this video and helping me share the joy of nematodes with everyone here. So the main question is, how do they work? How do these little microscopic worm things <laughs> get rid of the fungus gnats in our home? So basically, once you have mixed these with water, activated them in water, and watered them into your soil, they swim around your soil in the very thin, like, film of water around soil particles and they search out and hunt down the fungus gnat larvae, right? So I think they can sense the carbon dioxide or something that the fungus gnat larvae breathe out and they can hunt them down and get inside of them, usually through their mouth if they're breathing or eating. The nematodes will get inside of them and release a bacteria that slowly kills the fungus gnat larvae. Woo! And while the fungus gnat larvae is dying, the nematode is inside of it, feeding and reproducing new nematodes that eventually will get released when the fungus gnat larvae is fully dead and there's no more food there. The new nematode will be released into the soil to hunt down more larvae. And then once they've dealt with all of the larvae that they can find, they just die off it is totally fine, which is the goal. You don't want them to have any more larvae to eat. So once they have eaten all the larvae, they just go away. So why do I suggest you use nematodes instead of other things to control fungus gnats? Well, I have tried several different things. If you go back, I think probably four years, I do have a fungus gnat video where I talked about a few different things that I was using to deal with fungus gnats in my home. And I have tried a lot of things and a lot of them, they've worked a little bit, but they have downsides. Whereas nematodes don't really have many or any downsides in my opinion. So back in the day, I used to use hydrogen peroxide to flush out the soil. It would kill off any eggs or larvae of fungus gnats in the soil. But unfortunately, that also kills off all of the good things that we want to be keeping in our soil, the natural microbiome that we're trying to cultivate by using mycorrhizal stuff additions to the soil. It basically kills off everything. Any living thing going on in your soil, any predatory mites, etc., that will just be killed off by the hydrogen peroxide. And so it's while it works to get rid of the fungus gnats, it also ruins a lot of the hard work we've been trying to do to build up the microbiome inside of the soil. So it's not the best option. Whereas nematodes, it's natural, it's organic, it doesn't bother the rest of the ecosystem and they won't go for anything else except for their specific prey, which in this case is fungus gnats or thrips, etc. The other main thing I've tried is BTI or mosquito dunks, mosquito bits. I have used that before and it also does work, but you do have to keep using it over and over and over and over and over again with every single water or the the fungus gnats come back and it's just, it's just a bit of a pain to continue to having to repeat this process. Whereas nematodes, one or two times per season and you are done. You don't have to do it with every water. It is so much easier and you, you just don't have to think about it after you've done it. It's, it's a much better option in my opinion. Nematodes are also safe around humans and pets. So you don't have to worry about your animals or yourself when you are using them. You don't have to worry about the chemicals or the pesticides or anything because they're not that. They are a natural biological predator. 
And also, pests cannot become resistant to nematodes. It's not possible. Whereas they might be able to become resistant to BTI or other chemical pesticides, they can't with nematodes. They are stuck dying in the soil while the nematodes go at them and sort them out with no resistance whatsoever. And also for fungus gnats, nematodes attack where they're going to be giving the maximum amount of damage when the fungus gnats are in their larvae stage. This is where they can't lay eggs or anything, and so it will really stop the population in its tracks, not allowing them to further grow and reproduce and like continue the problem because fungus gnats have a really easy time reproducing quickly. I think I remember something like they can lay 300 eggs each, which is insane. So your population can get out of control really quickly. Whereas the nematodes will stop that in its tracks by dealing with the larvae stage and getting rid of them completely. How do we use nematodes? How do you get this packet of, of millions of tiny nematodes into your plant collection and really working on those fungus gnat larvae? Well, first off, Right when you get them delivered, this is extremely important. If you are not going to use them right away, you need to put them in the refrigerator. They need to be stored in the fridge. It says it on the packet. It says it on all the instructions. Put them in the fridge straight away. So I did that immediately when I got them. And then now that I'm ready to actually use them, I have pulled them out of the fridge to let them warm up a little bit to room temperature. You want them to be at room temperature so they're like active and moving around well. This goes the same with the water that you use. Room temperature water is best. If you're using water that's too cold, you can slow them down, which What's the point? Like you want them to work as effectively as possible. So may as well keep them quick with some like room temperature water, not hot water either, just room temperature. And also if you're only using part of the packet, which I don't really suggest, you may as well just use the whole thing. Um, I would suggest only warming up the part that you're using, but this pack, um, I think it works for like 60 square meters of land outside which is quite a lot. I think that's plenty for all of the houseplants in my home, at least. I think this, I think this is 10 million as well, if that gives you any information. 10 million, I believe. I think that's what that means. I'm not positive. Um, these are sold by the square meter rather than the millions, but if yours are sold by the million, this should be fine. Also, because they're not a chemical, they don't really get diluted with water, and so, like you can just use them at a higher concentration and in theory get rid of your problem faster if you're using them over a smaller amount of area. So one packet for I'd say the 150, 200 plants in my home has been perfectly fine. So once we're at room temperature, you can activate the nematodes by adding them into, like I said, room temperature water. And for a packet this size, I'm using four liters of water. And this is my like first dilution. I'm then going to take pieces of this dilution and dilute it further to spread them out throughout my entire collection because I do need to go around watering all of my plants to get rid of the fungus gnats the most effectively. From that four liters, you can take an eighth of that mixture and mix it in with five liters of water. I know there's a bunch of numbers, but basically I fill up my sprayer bottle. You wanna make sure you're not using something with a very fine hole in it because otherwise the nematodes might not be able to come out as well. It can clog up a watering can. So it's perfect to use something with like a full open spout or a really big hole um, that you can just pour out of so they don't get stuck in your watering can, etc. And then you can apply that to an eighth of the area of which you're going to water. You do wanna make sure that you're not adding the nematodes into fully, fully dry soil because then they'll just run right through. You also wanna make sure you're not adding too much. So think about it as if your pot is a sponge and if you pick it up and squeeze it, it'll only drop one or two drops of water. That's about how moist you want to be getting your plants with the nematode solution for them to work at their maximum capacity. And then repeat that until all of the nematodes are used. If you're working in a smaller area, you can just use a 
like more concentrated dilution it really doesn't matter um, it it's not going to affect the plant in any negative way if there are too many nematodes some might just die off because there's not enough like food for them to eat so don't worry too much about that I do also want to note that I'm not actually watering my moss poles with this because I'm pretty sure the fungus gnats aren't actually living in the moss in my poles but the soil of my plants and I'm also not watering any of the plants in semi-hydro or pod because they don't have any organic matter in their substrate and so they don't attract the fungus gnats themselves. So while I was watering, I actually spilled a little bit of the solution on my notebook and I noticed that it had dried out a little bit. And so I decided to pull out my mini microscope and see if I could see any of the nematodes in there. And I think I might have actually found a couple in this one spot. And it's either they're nematodes, which would make the most sense, or they're little worms that are in my water. Um, but I like to think that they're nematodes. I love this like weird science-y thing. Like, cause obviously you can't see them with your naked eye. They are microscopic. And I think this is 20 times zoomed in. So yeah, it's really cool. Very strange, um, super weird, but really cool to see. For reference, that is what I'm looking at. There's no way, no way you could see any of that with your naked eye. So now that I've treated my plants with the nematodes, I'm going to be keeping my collection fairly moist for the next 10 days or so, not letting it dry out completely, just because the nematodes need that little bit of like film of water around the soil particles in order to swim around and find the fungus gnat larvae. So it's important to keep things a little bit moist for a little while. You might have to repeat after two weeks if you notice that your problem is still persistent. It's probably worth getting another set, another round of nematodes in to re-kill more of the larvae that may have escaped or eggs that have hatched in the time that you've been using them, but that is easy enough to do and then you really don't need to worry about it for months. I tend to not repeat it. Personally, in my collection, I haven't found the need to do so. And then like three, four, six months down the line, I will get some more and do it again. It's kind of hard to eradicate fungus gnats completely from your collection because if I'm bringing new plants in or new soil in or something like that, there could be fungus gnat larvae or eggs in that and I'm not going to be having nematodes on hand all the time in order to water every single plant that comes in. That is not a reasonable expectation. I've just accepted that I will probably be bringing fungus gnats into my home throughout the year and so repeating this maybe every four months or six months is not the worst thing in the world. Last time I did it I think was 
I think it was late summer autumn time and now it is March and heading into spring and so another perfect time to get them going. But I don't really think about the months, I mostly just go based off of how many I am noticing around my home and whether or not they are annoying me. <laughs> so that's what I go off of. You can do it every six months if you want, if you want to do it bang on the dot, but I'm not that kind of person and yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep repeating this whenever I see fit, which is usually months apart. So you might be thinking nematodes are just killing the larvae of the fungus gnats. What about the ones that are already flying around my house? What about ones that escape or evade the nematodes? What do you do about those? And that's where I like to add in yellow sticky traps, which you can also get from Ladybird Plant Care. I like these ones, they work perfectly well. They come in a pack of five little ones that I can spread throughout my house. And you wanna use these because you want to catch the adult fungus gnats before they lay more eggs. So the yellow color of these sticky traps is perfect for fungus gnats because they are attracted to the color. And so they see this and they're like, ooh, I wanna go touch that. I wanna go land on that. They land on it and it is so sticky that it holds them in place, not allowing them to fly away. And essentially they starve to death and die, <laughs> which is ideal. So eventually you will have a little yellow sticky trap graveyard of fungus gnats, but they can be changed fairly regularly when you're done. I find that they keep hold of stickiness for quite a long time. So I don't change them until they're like quite full, but they last a while, you can change them when you want. It's really up to you. So when these are used in conjunction with the nematodes, you are really getting a two-pronged attack where the larvae and the adults are being attacked and you can really kill as many of them as possible in quite a short amount of time. So it's a really, really great partnership between those two things. So that is it. That is everything you need to know about nematodes. And I'm so glad that I am on my way in my collection to being fungus nap free with the nematodes at my side and the yellow sticky traps getting in there killing those fungus gnats. This is where I want to be. I want to say another huge thank you to Ladybird Plant Care for sponsoring this video. Honestly, even if you're not in the UK and you can't buy from them specifically, Ladybird Plant Care has a wealth of information online all about biological pest control, naturally dealing with pests in your home and doing it in a chemical free way, which is ideal. So thank you again, Lady Bear Plant Care. I really appreciate you sponsoring this video and giving me these nematodes to kill those fungus gnats in my collection. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. I'm curious to hear if you have used nematodes before to deal with fungus gnats or any other pests. Let me know your experiences down below. I love to hear from them and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to keep growing. Bye.